Hello everyone, you are watching Close to Algo Trading. Today, we're diving into the exciting world of trading strategy assessment. We will uncover why the Sharpe Ratio, while popular, might not always be the best tool for the job. In this video, we'll cover four main areas. First, we'll define the Sharpe Ratio and explain its formula. Then, we'll discuss the limitations of the Sharpe Ratio. Third, we'll introduce the Sortino and Comma ratios as alternative metrics. Finally, we'll compare two hypothetical trading strategies using all these metrics. So, what is the Sharp Ratio? Named after Nobel laureate William Forsyth Sharp, it measures the performance of an investment compared to a risk free asset after adjusting for its risk. With other words, the Sharpe Ratio seeks to characterize how well the return of an asset compensates the investor for the risk taken. Here's the formula. Sharpe Ratio equals expected return minus risk-free rate divided by standard deviation. Let's say we have a strategy with an expected return of 8%, a risk-free rate of 2%, and a standard deviation of 15%. The Sharpe Ratio would be 8 minus 2 divided by 15 which is approximately 0.4. Now, why might this not be the best for assessing trading strategies? It has several limitations that we should consider. Assumptions about normal distribution of returns. The Sharpe ratio assumes that returns follow a normal distribution. However, in reality, many trading strategies exhibit non-normal distributions with skewed or fat-tailed returns. This can lead to misleading results when using the Sharpe Ratio. Bias towards high-frequency trading strategies. The Sharpe Ratio favors strategies that generate small, frequent profits. It assumes that these profits can be scaled up proportionally, which may not hold true for all types of strategies. Therefore, high-frequency trading strategies might appear more successful when assessed using the Sharpe Ratio. Not accounting for tail risk. The Sharpe Ratio does not explicitly account for tail risk, which refers to the likelihood of extreme events or significant losses. Strategies with higher tail risk may not be adequately reflected in the Sharpe Ratio, potentially underestimating the risk associated with such strategies. Given these limitations, traders often turn to other metrics, such as the Sortino Ratio and Comma Ratio. These metrics provide additional insights and can help overcome some of the limitations of the Sharpe Ratio. Sortino and Comma Ratios The Sortino Ratio measures the risk-adjusted return of an investment by considering only downside volatility. It focuses on the deviation of returns below a specified threshold, typically the risk-free rate. This ratio provides a more specific assessment of risk and aligns with the common concern of investors towards downside risk. The comma ratio evaluates the risk-adjusted return by comparing the average annual rate of return to the maximum drawdown. This ratio is particularly useful for strategies where the maximum drawdown is a critical factor. It highlights the return generated in relation to the risk of experiencing significant losses. By considering these alternative metrics, traders gain a more comprehensive perspective on the risk and return characteristics of their trading strategies. The Sortino Ratio only considers downside volatility. The Comma Ratio measures return relative to the maximum drawdown. Let's now compare two hypothetical strategies using these metrics. We'll call them Strategy A and Strategy B. Strategy A has an annual return of 15%, a standard deviation of 10%, downside deviation of 7%, and a maximum drawdown of minus 20%. This gives us a sharp ratio is 1.3, a Sortino ratio is 1.86, and a comma ratio 0.8. On the other hand, Strategy B has an annual return of 12%, a standard deviation of 8%, downside deviation of 5%, and a maximum drawdown of minus 15%. So the Sharp Ratio for Strategy B is 1.25, the Sortino Ratio is 2.0, and the Comma Ratio is 0 
As we can see, although strategy A has a higher return, strategy B outperforms it when we take into account the downside deviation and maximum drawdown, showing lower risk for the return. Hence, strategy B gives you more return for each unit of risk, which is an important consideration in any investment decision. The choice between the Sharpe ratio and alternative metrics depends on the specific characteristics and goals of your trading strategy. Here are some recommendations to help you decide when to focus on the Sharpe ratio and when to consider other metrics. When to pay more attention to the Sharpe ratio. The Sharpe ratio can be a valuable tool when assessing strategies that fall within certain categories. For example, if you have a well-diversified, long-term investment portfolio focused on traditional assets, such as stocks and bonds, the Sharpe ratio provides a suitable measure of risk-adjusted performance. It is particularly relevant for strategies with relatively stable returns, moderate risk, and a focus on overall risk-adjusted returns. When to consider alternative metrics. On the other hand, Alternative metrics such as the Sortino Ratio and Comma Ratio come into play for strategies that may not conform to the assumptions of the Sharpe Ratio. For instance, if you are engaged in higher-risk trading strategies such as options trading, leverage-based strategies, or strategies with concentrated positions, alternative metrics become more valuable. These strategies often exhibit non-normal return distributions, higher tail risk, and may require a focus on downside risk management. The Sortino Ratio and Comma Ratio offer more specific insights into risk-adjusted performance, tail risk, and drawdowns, providing a better assessment of the strategy's viability in those contexts. Remember, no single metric can fully capture the complexity and nuances of a trading strategy. It's essential to consider a combination of metrics to gain a comprehensive understanding of risk and return. By using multiple metrics, such as the Sharpe Ratio, Sortino Ratio, and Comma Ratio, you can assess the strengths and weaknesses of your strategy from different perspectives, allowing for a more robust evaluation and informed decision-making. That's all for today's tutorial. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you found this video helpful.